Hello, everybody, and please, um, if you could, uh, add your names to the attendee list. The link is in the chat, um, and we'll get started um, with this um, OKD working group meeting today. Um, Christian Blombach, our one of our co-chairs, has um, got the flu. I'm not sure which flu it is, but we're wishing him well, and he is staying home and not available for today's call. So. Um, if you could add your name to this um, attendees list, that would be great so we can keep track of who's here and where you're from. Um, and we'll just drive through today's meeting. It may not take the full hour, but um, we'll see where we go. All right. So Vadim, you're here, which is great because um, Christian tapped you on the shoulder to give the OKD4 update. Um, as well as Vadim has an OKD on GCP um, tour. So that we'll use that today to drive some conversations. And just a quick update on events, upcoming events. There still is not a, a date posted um, for KubeCon EU. If it does happen, we will have a face-to-face -face OKD working group meeting there. Um, we were going to hold a virtual OpenShift Commons gathering um, to replace the Amsterdam one, but we have now canceled that, but we are having a Red Hat Summit um, OpenShift Commons gathering, and it will be virtual on April 27th. And I'm going to ask um, Vadim and um, Christian to pre-record and probably get um, Dusty to pre-record uh, an OKD4 um, Fedora CoreOS talk. It won't be part of the um, agenda for the day. The agenda is very curated down to mostly customer talks and one state of um, OpenShift 4 and Kubernetes released um, talk, um, just because we don't think people are going to watch an entire day-long event, but we'll see. But they will watch stuff. And so we're going to add all of the talks that aren't getting broadcast as part of that day um, we're going to pre-record all of those and have them available. So um, we'll be doing that. And as far as I know, almost all of the other uh, things um, over the next few months have been um, canceled or postponed. But my offer to anyone here, if you've got a topic, um, whether it's OKD related or Fedora Corvus that you want to record a briefing on, we're just basically taking all the content from the KubeCons and Summit that aren't getting broadcast and um, pre-recording them and making them available um, on our YouTube channels, um, which is RH OpenShift. So that's sort of the state of state of events things here. Any questions, comments about that? Okay, cool. Pretty much the state of the universe. So uh, maybe Vadim, if you could. Um, give us a little update on where we're at right now with um, OK Day 4 and see um, what's, what are any of the blockers, if you want to share your screen. Sure. So, here are the notes. Um, there's been quite active two weeks for us. Um, the biggest news is that we finally have a proper documentation on dots.okd.io. Uh, it's pretty much a carbon copy from OCP 4.3 documentation. So it has a lot of inaccuracies, uh, a lot of mentions of rail OS. So what we would like you to do is to skim through those, find the parts which are irrelevant to Fedora CoreOS, like IBM Z, and uh, file bugs to the OKD repo. Uh, we will arrange them um, together and um, ask OpenShift Docs team to, to get a priority on those. Um, later on, we would be able to I'm not too familiar with documentation and the way they template things, but uh, after a couple of tries, we would be able to submit quick fixes ourselves manually. Um, status of the platform support. So um, AWS, vSphere, UPI, bare metal are known to work. Uh, we've tackled quite a few bugs. 
during that cycle, but those are pretty stable. Um, will we finish the support for GCP API? Um, in my case, Bootstrap node did not get destroyed, but uh, we need more confirmation. And if that happens for everybody, that's the bug we will fix. Note that there is no official image uploaded to Fedora Core as controlled uh, bucket yet. Uh, so for now, you would have to upload it yourself manually and override the path to it using uh, special and var. And I'll also be showing the installer process a bit later today. Uh, next, uh, Overt, uh, Rev, and all things like that uh, should also work. Um, there is one bug uh, folks have hit. It has a workaround, but we need to confirm that every other installation hits it as well, because I didn't hit it in my install. Hey, Vadim, when, when you uh, say it, when, when you yeah. say Oh, hello. Sorry about that feedback. Um, that's um, over UPI, right? Or is that over IPI? That's over IPI. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so oh, the IPI cool. works. I might give that a try. That would be great to know. <laughs> so, uh, next. Yeah, also. Yeah. OpenStack API also work. I should I'm gonna um I didn't try the UPI, but uh since UPI is pretty much what IPA does with modifications, um that should also work, of course. That's more complex. Uh the biggest pain point right now is Azure, because we're still blocked on tickets from Fedora. Uh, hopefully, those would get resolved soon. On the beta status, we have a beta milestone. Uh, currently, six open issues. Two of them would be tackled by upcoming MCO rebase. Uh, three tickets are basically tracking issues in OKD for the Azure problems. And the over credential issues, I've mentioned previously, is what we need confirmation and uh, hopefully it will be tackled soon. Uh, next on the official release, where the main criteria is that we don't use forked installer and MCD, and we test upgrades. Um, the upgrades are fairly easy to enable. We don't do that so that, because we want to push to Quay first. Um, and once it's done, uh, we will enable upgrades and have them properly tested. Uh, the forks is a bit more complex. We need to work with the installer team on the approach to that, but uh, we started working on uh, installer and MCO integration now, so hopefully it, it will be complete soon. Okay, and by no forks, you, you mean that if we're, if we're building the installer from source code, we don't have to use the FCOS branch anymore? Um, but we'll be able to build from a from a one of the release number branch or the master branch. Yes, correct. Uh, also, you would file issues straight to um, either Bugzilla or uh, installer GitHub repo because that would affect the code the installer team supports. Okay, excellent. So let's go with the questions on uh, on the status. No questions. Sweet. No, I'm um, very happy. I, I have a fully repeatable process now um, using bare metal UPI that I can create and destroy clusters, and and it is consistently successful. Um, you, you guys. Have in in what platform? Uh, I'm actually I'm actually using Libvirt um, with VBMC to to emulate bare metal. Um, I'm getting mm -hmm. ready. I'm getting ready to publish um, fairly comprehensive docs on how to do it in my GitHub page um, that it's targeted to my internal team here. 
uh, so so they can so it'll it'll have a lot more instruction than you guys would need because it, it'll tell you how to install DNS and set up your bind server and everything. Um, That's uh, pretty good actually for just everyone. Yeah, so probably this weekend I'll have it done. If you troll around in the project on my GitHub site, the docs are all in there, but the the readme sit, um, the readme doesn't link to them yet because they're still kind of work in progress. And, and I, I'm working now on making it work with fixed IP addresses, but we we may have run into an an F cost bug or. Um, something because it's not keeping the fixed IP addresses, but it works great with DHCP reservations. Yeah, persisting the static IPs is a bit tricky because of the draw cut, not saving them as network manager key files, but saving them as if configs and Fedora is ignoring that. Um, yeah, that's basically what Fedora should fix, but we have a workaround for that. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, we could just that. read the if config, so I don't know why we're not. What What's stopping us from doing so? That was a legacy. The if config files from Network Manager reading and writing them? Why are those legacy? Yeah. Well, Drake those will are do bash that. files. Those must die in a fire. At least that's what Fedora 31 wants us to do. Yep. Uh, but they don't have to be bash files. That's why they're declarative. It could just be, you know, read config things. They're not like they're not like Etsy network interfaces, which is actually a shell script that has to be executed to run. Which, by the way, if you never knew that today, you learned. Uh, that's not our call to make. We're following upstream and we're sticking to that. Um, in any case, let's switch to can, can the I screenshot ask store. Can, yeah, can we pause for a second, Vadim? Um, and can you go back to your notes for a second here? Because the last bit, I just, your notes file there. Um, so for the release, um, how are we in terms of getting a beta release official out the door? Where are we at? Um, I would like to wait for information about the box we are hitting right now. Uh, the overt bug being the most probably critical. Um, we can leave with the bootstrap not being destroyed. That's pretty easy to uh, to tackle. And uh, we'll give Azure a couple of days. Uh, I will. I will contact Fedora Cruise guys about their progress on Azure. If we won't be able to tackle them in a couple of days, we will have to push that to release date and go go to beta without them. So um, hopefully a week, maybe. Okay. So what what I what I would like to to see um, is if you can flag the whole group and especially me when the overt thing gets done um, and and resolved properly that we we do some sort of um, beta announcement with or without Azure because it, we seem to have some consensus here that we've you know got got good cross platform support and if we could we could aim for next week that would be um great to do that announcement i'm wondering if i can coerce um is it charo who was talking or was that neil that was talking um about having um success there a minute ago i think that was that neil. Neil, to um taking some of the experience that you had and turning that into a, a public blog post um and some content we can use um in that, like in you know, a Fedora magazine or just a, a regular old OpenShift com, uh, OpenShift.com blog. Um, oh yeah, actually, I, you could probably coerce me into doing that. Um, my friend Matt Bowling, um, he he works on the consulting side of Red Hat. He's been trying to get me to do something like that for a while. 
Yeah, no, because it would be nice to have the announcement then coincide it with an external person writing a blog post about it. Um, and I'm not sure w where we would publish it, but um, yeah, and Chris is offering some editorial help as well. So I think I know part of my problem with getting the Fedora magazine article out is just time um, and having at least a, a minimal amount of content to um, to I'm good at editing things and shape sh shifting things and getting the messages right. But if I don't have some technical um, content and and links to it, it's just more blah 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 from a talking head. So. Um, and I haven't really actually managed to set up an OKD anywhere, so I don't I don't know what to say other than the generic, hey, you can now do this, and FCOS goes with this, and then, eh. <laughs> so, um, so what I'd like to do is is if we can get to next Friday. So, like I'm like looking at the calendar here now, um, and so next Friday would be next week. Are we talking Vadim on the 24th of next week or aiming for like next Friday, the 27th of having at least the overt thing resolved? I would rather go to Friday because okay. we also need to do a lot of churning before that, like publishing releases to Quay, discussing things with uh, with Clayton about about further steps, yeah. uh, we have tons of documentation to update. So that that's what I, I'm not sure about. Yeah. So let's aim for the, let's let's put it a bit of a stake in the ground here. <coughs> Excuse me, and say the 27th. And if I can ask everybody on the call to look at the docs this week and next week and make as many bugs, point out as many bugs as possible. Um, and we'll try and clean up the the docs for the 27th as well so um a little light reading over the next little while um, and get those bugs in because that would help immensely to have some more eyeballs on that and then we'll maybe we can get on the next call which would be the 31st um someone from the docs team in as well to talk about you know the way forward with docs and moving that forward so that works for everybody. I would really like to, to get this out the door um, before the end of March, at least to beta. Yeah, I, I think I could have a, a blog post for you guys to kick around by the 27th. Because I, I should I should have the documentation on, on what I've done in the lab so that my team here can re reproduce it. I should have that done this weekend. That would be great. And then even that that is a baseline and then between if Chris is willing and myself um, and hopefully Christian gets a little bit better, we can just get everybody else to add in their two cents about it too and and have some content to get out there. So that would be real that would be a really nice thing because we've had so many crazy things happening to be able to, you know, give somebody all the folks out there in virtual um, self-isolation, something to play with over the next few weeks. So how about Vadim, that tour of um, OKD4 on GCP? That would be a wonderful thing to see. Sure. This one. Um, that's the final result, but um, the first step is here. So I didn't bother with uh, a proper video. I've got a bunch of screenshots and a lot of talking, but here's what we have. Uh, we will show how to install OKD for GCP using IVI flow, uh, show a few known issues, and take a quick peek on what the installer is actually doing. Uh, UPI flow should be pretty different because you have to set up things uh, yourself. And in our case, we want to take care, we want the installer to take care of, of that. So uh, here's the install config template I'm using. Um, there is not much different from other providers, actually. Uh, the difference is, of course, platform GCP, your project ID, and the region you're using. 
the rest is pretty much the same. Um, I'm using, it's in fact, change your template because I'm templating those uh, using Ansible and create clusters on demand. Um, I wrote my own wrapper around the installer where I can do make GCP or make AWS and I have multiple clusters running outside. Uh, note that it's not designed to, to keep a long term cluster living. It's just to quickly spin them up and destroy. So uh, I just run make GCP and it, and it does the thing. Um, and here is the link to that. You can dig into my terrible skills and make files later. So what it does, in fact, it pulls uh, the latest installer. Uh, we're pulling from origin for the four installer. And uh, we're verifying that it's the correct version and the release image matches the, the desired one. Next, what it would do, it would template an install config from GCP template and uses the base domain for our GCP account. Uh, it's literally calling an, uh, an Ansible command and templates it. We are also copying to a, a temporary folder from my file the, from, for my cluster, and we're saving a copy because the installer uh, consumes the install config.yaml. Uh, later on, this huge terrible command, uh, which starts the installer from the, the image we have just pulled, so we're passing it. Wait, I have a better line. Uh, first of all, we mount the folder with our cluster because um, you can have different ones running meanwhile and we're making the installer output to this particular directory. Next we mount the Google credentials and finally we, we run uh, create cluster command because the entry point in this image is uh, OpenShift installer. We also override the release image, um, just to be sure. And currently, you have to override the image used by the installer, which points to our local copy of uh, Fedora Core OS. Uh, here's the output from the installer, and things start running. Basically, uh, it notifies us that the OS image has been overridden and uh, so is the release image, but that's what we expect. So after about five to 10 minutes to create the necessary resources, we would see that images in our console started creating and uh, the bootstrap image got assigned an external IP. So if we SSH that IP, we would see that initial Fedora CoreOS image has been uh, has started and uh, there is a bootcamp service there which does all of the jobs and we can watch it using journal uh, CTL command. So the first thing uh, bootcube service would do is to upgrade us to the latest image from our um, release payload. It would extract the machine OS content pull it and apply it as an OS3 content, and then finally reboot. So after the reboot, we would see that the Oracle's version has changed the latest, the one in, in 6th of March when I run this, and boot cube service continues. That's basically a huge difference from Arcos, where uh, the initial image does not pivot into itself. So uh, during the process, you can, on the bootstrap node, you can already export the cube config from this directory and slash up to OpenShift and start watching uh, what's happening in the cluster once it assembles uh, the API service. Oh, this is pretty small. It should gonna work. Uh, sweet. So first thing we see is that the version of 
it like this. <laughs> That's much better. Can you can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. I yep. Find it, at least on. Yep. Great. Uh, so what we see here is that the first operator called version, it's a cluster version operator, started progressing, and it has started um, the network operator, and it's also progressing. This is why three of our masters are not yet ready. So network configuration has been installed in them, and we have tons of pods hanging and pending because nodes are not yet ready. Don't have to do that all the time, eh? Like this. And when finally network is installed, those masters are reporting that they are ready yet. And other operators like machine config started progressing, pods are in creating state, and so on. So the difference from UPI flow here is that there are no workers yet. They physically don't exist. Um, that's expected because we use machine API to create them dynamically. We define three machine sets, each of them in different uh, availability zone, and we want one machine in each. And after some time, when machine API operator starts progressing, it would create machines. They would get uh, status provisioning. Um, that one is not yet uh, probably processed, but later we would see that new workers have started appearing in our GCP console. And eventually, network configuration would be installed in them. Necessary files would be copied. They would become ready. And more operators would start their progress. Um, the most critical ones is, of course, authentication and Cube um, API server, basically. Uh, there are lots of crash loop backhauls, the great operators yet, that's pretty much expected because um, authentication has not yet created all the necessary certificates and so on. But in the end, yeah. in the end, we would see that install has completed. Um, the OM killed um, pods are irre irrelevant, it's actually a bug and should be fixed. All machines are ready, and uh, we're done. We can run OC status, and uh, yep, pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, two known issues, again, you would have to use the OpenShift install OS image override, because it's not yet uploaded. Once it's done, we will update the installer to point to correct location. And in my case, bootstrapping never actually completed. Uh, rather, it did complete, but OpenShift installer on my site never noticed that and never asked to destroy the bootstrap node. Um, pretty sure the problem is on my end because all things look like it should work. So if we have this confirmed, we'll dig into that a bit deeper. Hey, Vadim, go um, back two slides. Two slides. That one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so those um, out of memory killed pods. Um, I don't know if I see it on Etsy D, but I see the same thing um, when I'm doing the UPI install uh, in my lab. It, it doesn't seem to adversely affect anything because the correct pods do appear to be running. Uh, but if if that's a bug, um, I might be able to provide some additional information because it's happening on the UPI side as well. Yeah, it also affects OCP. Um, okay. Okay. So there but, is a Bugzilla. There is a there is a Bugzilla for that, and those spots they update the Cube API schema, and okay. once they are done, they are uh, using way too much memory because we're limiting them. 
and they get all them killed because they have used all of their limits. Okay. Uh, that's how it works, really. Um, it shouldn't affect anything. It can affect, though. <laughs> so it's a bug which needs to be fixed, of course. Uh, yes, but since OKD is just a fork installer in MCO, the rest is the very same what we have in OCP. So every single bug which is outside of the uh, installer field builds or MCO field to put a proper file. All of that goes straight to OCP, of course. But we would like you to notify us that you found something um, and file a bug on the OKD repo as well, so that we would know how how bad things are. Any other questions? Hey, Vadim, it's Danny. I just have, have a quick one. I might be uh, off a bit, but um, I think a while ago we were discussing about uh, moving to ECD uh, operator and use that being be that used as part of the uh, boot cube and all this kind of stuff. Is that um, been done or still on the plan or what? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, mm -hmm. I barely know how it works, honestly. Right. But it's there. So the 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 um, boot cube uh, basically is using the the operator nowadays, is it? Like in versus when he, we used to be like, I don't know, four zero or whatever, four one. Um. Yes. So previously, right. what we did, we asked MCO to template at CD member mm -hmm. static pod definitions. Yeah. Um. I think at CD operator is doing that for us nowadays. Okay. That's... But before the, the before the official OCP 4.4 documentation goes out, um, mm -hmm. I don't think we will have a proper description of the process. Okay. Yes. Let's find out what's happening. Or any other questions? How long did it take for you to set this up? Um, the whole process about thirty minutes. So maximum installer will allow you to run twenty minutes of Bootstrap and forty minutes to set up the cluster. And I think it's about 20 minutes for the infrastructure. So it cannot take more than an hour and a half. It, it will fail in the middle if it takes an hour and a half. And this is set up with IPI style, right? So then that means that in the in the um, console you can do things like grow the cluster and whatnot, and everything just kind of magically happens correctly, or is it, or are there caveats oh, there yeah. too? Uh, once I run uh, create cluster, I'm not touching it at all. I'm just <laughs> watching it, uh, just watching it fail or or eventually succeed. And wait, how did I do that? Oh yeah, um, and yes, due to machine API being supported here, I can scale machines and things. Um, and I won't have to provision them manually myself. All I and need that is, is the to... that's the cool part. Yeah. <laughs> well, any yeah. chance you? Any chance you might remember, Vadim, whether we support the machine uh, API on um, on um, uh, VMware? Because I remember in the past it was not ready for that. Um. Yes. Okay. We have okay. a machine API uh, on VMware, and I uh -huh. think there are works to make a VMware API. Okay. Um. Cool. I don't think we have this in Fedora Core OS installer yet because we didn't rebase, and I'm not I'm no, concerned about the core. <laughs> but yeah, it's totally possible. Thanks. 
Yeah, and Neil, in the in the lab work that I've been doing, um, even though it's UPI with Libvirt, if you provision just with the vert install, if you provision another uh, machine pointed to booting off of the worker ignition config, uh, the only thing you have to do is approve the CSR, and and oh, it will. Oh, cool. Join. Yeah, and so so I at, at before I left the for the weekend, I've got a cluster running at home um, with the usual three masters and six workers. Uh, and you can just keep adding workers to it till you run out of CPUs and RAM. That's cool and terrifying, but yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, you need this as well. So um, for Libvirt, what you can do is to install a cluster API. Um, as a go actuator, I think. And you would be able to create machines in a similar fashion of using machine sets and machines. Oh, I know this. That's cool. Um, without approving a, without approving CSRs because that's taken care of by machine API. And yeah, you would, you would get the very same experience basically. That's nice. That, is, that would be very cool. All right. Um, I guess that's all. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Vadim. That is awesome. That was fantastic. Yes, that was that was really great. Um, I think that's that's awesome work. I just wanted. I think you said the earlier in the meeting that the OKD content um, on documentations was under OKD preview. I, I believe it's actually listed as OKD latest. Just wanted yeah. to double, double check as opposed to the word preview. Um, so this is the latest documentation and this is what we're asking people to take a look at. Um, and if they find, you know, verbiage that's wrong or instructions that are wrong, just um, log a bug. Um, and you're asking us to log the bug in the OKD issues, is that correct, Vadim? Yes. Um, you can go straight to OpenShift Docs first, but um, don't expect this issue to get a lot of attention. Um, and also we would like to review the, review the changes first and advise probably on a better, yeah. better wording and, and other effective things. As the latest versus preview, um, latest I don't mind does not changing. Look like, latest does not look like OpenShift 4. Um, yes. it, it has things like mini shift in here. It still mentions Ansible playbooks and stuff, so that doesn't seem right. There's some, yeah, there, that's kind of what I was pushing at here. Is, is that the, the right stuff to be? Okay. Hi, Dan. It's Michael Burke. It's a, I'm the doc point person. Yeah. Hi. Hi, so docs person. Hello. I've been lurking here. I'm a little scared to jump in. Um, yeah, the, the water's uh, fine. Latest, the latest docs were pulled off of our master, which, yes, is 4.3. Do we want to wait until 4.4 4 merges down the master? No, that like having the late having a section latest section of docs that actually is OKD four is really really good, but it is very very weird that I'm still seeing stuff from OpenShift three and OKD three in the latest tab. Like mini shift is not a thing on OKD four at all. We don't have an equivalent to mini shift right now. Yeah, so that those are the issues that I would ask you to to actually log. Um, okay. If you find them, and we can just then we'll have a list of things that are odd and need to be removed. Um, so I think this is the one that, that we should be looking at, the OKD latest one that's up there. And um, I think the right way to do this is to, and I keep trying to bump to the, is to put an issue in the OpenShift OKD list. And then, you know, it says yeah. drop section on adding rel computes or whatever, you know, those kinds of things. And then the documentation team and the other 
um, folks can review this and make either make the corrections or take your cut and paste. If you have a sentence, if we did bad grammar, cut and paste that in um, as well um, with the correction. That will be helpful. Okay. That, that well, this, this might be my ignorance, but if um, if we've already caught a lot of these issues in our 4.4 branch that's pending the merged, is are we wasting people's time pulling out issues that we already know about? Or Well, people have to have something to do. So far, we haven't been able to give anybody <laughs> anything to do. <laughs> All right. If, if the well, here. documentation is complete enough, and this documentation that we're looking at is just a copy of the 4.3 OCP documentation, uh -huh. Could we go ahead and, and just present the work in progress for four documentation here? Yeah, I would much rather go through a Google Doc, or not a Google, a GitHub like issue flow than like finding something in guide here and then ed editing an issue over here kind of thing. Right. So who Honestly, I'm confused about how this workflow is supposed to work because none of this makes a whole lot of sense for making either OKD or Open OCP better in terms of documentation or anything. So well, that's encouraging. Yeah. So the documentation person who was on the call, you want to speak up? What, what, what works better for you guys? I'm sorry, could you list the options again? We don't have any options at this point. That's that's the problem. <laughs> right now, we're being told if we file issues on the doc on the OpenShift docs repo, they'll get ignored because they're on OKDIO. So we're filing them in OKD, on OpenShift OKD, but that doesn't mean a whole lot because I'm pretty sure the docs people aren't really looking at those. Somebody has to go and prune them and then go forward them back to the docs people. And this okay. feels like a whole lot of busy work for no particularly good gain. So let's let's pause for a minute, Neil. Michael, who is the documentation connection here, liaison for our group. If, if Michael, if you could tell us what would be the best process for you getting these, getting this feedback. Um, in terms of it getting into our scope of attention, I think we did it against the uh, documentation repo. Can you put a Can link? We can you put a link to that? And is is it public? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so can you put the link to that in the chat? Sure, let me dig it up. Because I'd, I'd hey. rather not give bad hey. advice and do that. Hey, Michael. Can we put um, OKD right in? Go ahead. Can I can I make your suggestion? Um. Not sure whether this is technically possible, but in the um, um, in the docs, in the repo docs, um, if folks are, um, I think you you switch from 3x to 4x, you would switch to a different way with modules and everything. And I believe if uh, folks will uh, will um, log an issue or anything like that, can both um, log that as OKD versus OCP, and then obviously we're going to have labels mentioning this is OKD and this is OCP, so then we can differentiate and maybe you guys can, uh, you know, pay attention to more OCP and less OKD and vice versa, obviously, based on your workload and such like. Yeah, we. I believe there is an OKD only label in there. Right. Or maybe it's but, origin uh, only. But I guess, I guess folks who don't have uh, right permission on the repo, um, they can't set a label, can they? They cannot. Uh, only oh, only right. people with commit access or greater on a repo can actually set right. labels. Right. Yeah, this is why I wanted to start with OKD repo first, because we can uh, we can aggregate a bunch of issues and dump on a huge PR to OpenShift talks and get more attention to that instead of multiple small PRs from contributors which we don't which we don't have options to track because they can affect both OCP and OKD. Uh, so that was the process which we came up with. It might not be effective, but uh, let's discuss that. Well, Vadim, do you want us to work from the Enterprise 4.4 .4 branch in OpenShift Docs, but, but 
post the issues to the OKD project? I think we should follow the latest This is why the latest here and I'm hoping you're posting the latest code you have to the master. So once OKD derives from that, they automatically get all the changes and the contributors would update master and eventually that would make to OpenShift 4.4. But the process is different. Um, we can post to 4.4 four branch, yes. So, but the 4.4 .4 is not what's on the OKD latest. That's 4.3, correct? Correct. Yeah, post to 4. Dot, excuse me, post to master. Okay, so um, maybe it would help me, Michael, if you took over the screen for a few minutes and showed us where the where we can view the master, um, and gave us a, a couple of things about that and how to how to look at that and and review that. Okay, you want to look at master in our repo? In your repo. Yeah, just drive us through where we should be looking so I can get it in the recording and then, you know, edit out some of the blah, blah, blah here and create a little guide on how to view the master. And is this something, if we update these things, um, if we get stuff in over the next couple of weeks that might surface before the 27th? What is the 27th? That is when we were going to do a, um, been driving people to do a beta, do Friday okay. release. Okay, what's, this is our master. What would you like to see in here? So if I wanted to view the docs um, in, a, in a visually readable way to, to see where there were mistakes, how would I do that? I click on like yeah is there a way to view a rendered version of the master branch everything in you master think? should be in okdio okay, is it that what it's called oh okay i thought okdio okay, was the, it's just like a copy of the 4.3 docs that's what i thought as well forgive me oh. Because my ignorance, I'm new to this game here, but um, no it's okay. We're all new to this. I would say for folks who who wants to see the master, they can build it um, locally, and they can um, when they build it locally, they can um, see and render in real time. They make changes, and that's how you normally contribute to the docker uh, to the um, docs. That's how I've been doing FreeX. Um, in um, whether the 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 current master. Is pointing to to uh, docs um, dot okd dot io latest. That's a different topic, because I don't ideally personally. One of the uh, frustration I had in FreeX is when you say latest, latest doesn't mean anything because if you switch to OCP, they don't have latest. So ideally, it would be nice to kind of uh, follow exactly what OCP is when when we say you know 4.3, it's 4.3 and that is latest for the four is whatever rather than saying latest and have this magic stuff being done which points to either for three for two for one etc but that's maybe a different conversation to have well i mean one of the key differences between okd and ocp is that okd is uh, essentially rolling forward on the latest code anyway so ideally the documentation on master could correspond to the active rolling development of okd as it stands because then at some point they'll branch it and then that'll become OCP and a, and a quote unquote stable OKD sub-release or whatever. That's that's what I thought it was supposed to work like. I could be wrong. I also assumed that's the workflow. So if we, um, if Michael, if you could merge 4.4 preview branch into master before March, 27 you will have a lot of testers and a lot of uh feedback i think that would be a win-win 
4.4 preview is master. He said that a couple of times, Vadim. I'm sorry. But, okay, right? so what we need to do is... Right, so any changes would be rendered on docs.kitty.io and we can go just straight filing bugs. Just a matter of um, how to track them properly. Should we go straight to OpenShift Docs and uh, ask uh, and label them with OKD or add some kind of a tag in the title? Which which process would you prefer? We could just put OKD in the label uh, in the in the subject line of the, the title. Uh, yeah, it's, sorry. Thank you. In the title of the the thing, if you did OKD colon and then whatever the issue was you found. Um, going back to where he was showing them earlier, where you log an issue, I think that's that's the proper way. Yeah, I think that would work. Can you, go, can you go back to that issues page and maybe just for <clears throat> go into our repo, right, and uh, choose. Click the issues, and then what I'm saying here is if you could do here, just put OKD colon or in brackets, OKD colon, and then whatever the issue is. Like that, right? wrong, or whatever, and then. Or whatever. Yeah. I will talk to my uh, documentation project manager and let him know we're doing this because he generally will review the issues. We've been trying to get better about reviewing the issues. So I'll help. Yeah. And he can then we can then start to to uh, schedule Okay. And so I'm going to ask these issues as as we have the ability. I'm going to ask one more time. Um, just because I can't, I'm, a, I'm still confused. Are the docs that are on docs.okd.io latest OKD 4.4 or OKD 4.3? They are they're the docs in their current state, which is based on 4.3 plus whatever we may have added for 4.4. Any issues that we have for 4.4 that are done, we will likely have merged to master. At a certain point in time. So anything that going, you know, we'd have to do another merge with any fixes that you have for the 27th. Yes. Okay. So is that clear as mud for everybody on the call? Um, <laughs> all right. So. Yes, but I think it's beginning to clear up just a little bit. So I think the, the basic thing here is if you find a mistake or a misstatement or grammar or whatever in the OKD documentation, go to OpenShift doc dash docs in the OpenShift repo, log an issue with OKD in brackets, um, that'll flag it, and we will and give as much detail as you can about where you found the mistake and how you found the mistake um, or the correction that you want to be have made and submit it. And we'll, you know, Michael, if we need to come back and have another call, um, what I'd like to do is, is capture this um, and, and make a very short video, maybe with um, Michael and myself restating all of what we've just done and put it up and circulate that and give people uh, homework for the next two weeks. And so, Michael, I may reach out to you to record that um, later this week, if you have it, if you don't mind. Especially okay. once, you run it, once you run it by your management team to make sure that they're okay with this. Sounds good. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, is there anything else we should hash to today?
anyone else make any new discoveries, um, new platform things? Okay, then I am going to call this meeting. Um, and thank you, Vadim, for taking on the GCP demo. That was great. I'll probably try and snip that out as a short video as well and share that. And Craig, for your Medium blog post, that's wonderful. And everybody else for all your efforts to make this happen. And I'm really looking forward to getting beta out the door. So um, enjoy your week and read some docs. Sounds good. Yes, thanks in advance, everyone, for any uh, changes you had. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.